What's up guys, it's Telus here. Welcome back to the final video looking over all of Warriors in World of Warcraft Legion. The change is coming to them in World of Warcraft Legion. We've already gone through Arms Fury and most recently the abilities and artifact overview of the Protection Warrior. This video will be going over the talents and the PvE and PvP talents that are specific to a protection warrior in World of Warcraft Legion. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's dive straight into the talent tree and take a look at what we have available. Now, I'd say about 75% of this talent tree is brand new. Uh, everything else is the same uh, with some changes here and there. But you have about 75% new talent, so there's big changes in here. That uh, some of them are interesting, some of them uh, different play styles, and and you know just kind of some different uh, ideas for you to choose in terms of what you would prefer your play style to be. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start with the level 15 tier. Now the level 15 tier basically is just ripping the 60 tier down, and then also putting Warbringer in it. Warbringer functions exactly the same as it used to, except for now it's got a five yard radius on the stun and damage. Before, it would just stun the target instead of rooting it. Now it stuns the target and everyone five yards within the target and deals that damage. So uh, the damage uh, addition there, everything is really nice. Uh, that is what comes with Warbringer. Stormbolt, essentially the same. Nothing has really changed there. Uh, the range is still, uh, the range actually has been reduced by 10 yards it's now only a 20 yard range so there has been a reduction in the range however everything else about it has stayed the same and then lastly you have shockwave which is still functioning the way it does on live as well so the first tier very much the same the second tier the 30 tier you have impending victory um, this functions exactly as it does on live however do remember that victory rush did have its health buff uh, change from 15% of your maximum health to 30% of your maximum health that you will heal. So if you decide to go with impending victory, you are, uh, while you're going to be able to use uh, victory or impending victory whenever you want, as long as you have enough rage, you will be forfeiting uh, your ability to get the 30% uh, of your maximum health back as opposed to just 15. So do take note of that. Inspiring Presence, uh, you inspire your allies within 60 yards, causing them all to be healed for 3% of all damage they deal. Um, so basically you run in there, you deal a lot of damage. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this actually works with me. Uh, we can go ahead and test right here and uh, see if it does work with me. No, it does not. So I do not get healed for this, but all of my allies will get healed for this. Um, I do know there have been a couple of Horde players that have come here and tried to attack and Inspiring Presence just uh, continues to uh, uh, kind of load up my uh, my log there in the bottom left with all of the heals that I'm dishing out from it. So it does work with that. Safeguard, a part of Safeguard has already been kind of put in to intervene uh, through the talent tree of an, uh, the artifact weapon. However, this uh, makes it more potent. So this is a little bit different from the uh, Safeguard on Live, because Safeguard on Live is already somewhat uh, in to intervene. So this one is a passive. Intercepting a friendly target now causes 20% of their damage to be transferred to you for 6 seconds. So the passive, uh, the artifact weapon, I believe, gives you a 10% buff on it. Um, allows you to take 10% of the... Or the damage that you intercept, 10% of that is reduced through the artifact weapon. And then intervene uh, allows you to intercept the next ability. And then the buff to this intervene here with safeguard, basically 20% uh, of their damage to transfer to you for 6 seconds as well. So uh, a little bit of a bonus there to safeguard and what it can do for you. So that's pretty nice. Um, I do remember, I think at one point this used to be grotesquely overpowered on the... Uh, on the uh, beta realms and they had to nerf it because it was just way too easy for a warrior to mitigate an absurd amount of damage uh, in PvP. So that's been nerfed but it still is a very good option on this 30 tier. Uh, in my opinion, unless this is really used in PvE law, impending victory is not something that I would like. Uh, 
I would probably prefer for Inspiring Presence or Safeguard as opposed to Impending Victory just because uh, 15 versus 30% of your maximum health is a lot as a Prot Warrior. Remember that. With that being said, the 45 tier, we have Renewed Fury. Ignore Pain also enrages you, increasing all damage you deal by 10% for 6 seconds. If you remember, Ignore Pain is a... Um, one second cooldown, 20 to 60 rage uh, damage mitigation that is brand new to a protection warrior. Uh, basically, uh, if you want to just keep using this at 20 rage, if you want to be more of a DPS prop warrior in a uh, battleground maybe, uh, you can use Renewed Fury and then just pop it at 20 so that you can get the extra 10% damage for 6 seconds. It's going to be up to you. It's only a one second cooldown, so depending on how much rage you generate, this may be an option. There's Ultimatum. Your Shield Slam and Critical Strikes cause your next Focus Rage to cost no rage. Focus Rage is a new ability, which basically um, it increases the damage of your Shield Slam. So you can basically bounce uh, shield, uh, Focus Rage and Shield Slam off of one another to end up getting a really powerful Shield Slam. And then your last option here is going to be Avatar. Nothing has really changed. It still functions as it does on live. In the 60 tier, we have a Warlord's Challenge. While Berserker Rage is active, you may use Taunt with no cooldown, and taunted enemies move 50% faster towards you. That's pretty cool. Um, to be able to taunt them and have them move 50% faster towards you is, is actually kind of a cool idea. Um, so this would be fun to play with in PvP. Uh, it'd probably be really frustrating for people to deal with in PvP. Do you remember that your Heroic Leap resets the cooldown taunt? So you can have all kinds of fun with this. Uh, getting rid of people who are chasing your flag carrier, etc. If you are for some reason not the flag carrier of the tank. You know, uh, just some interesting options there. There's Bounding Stride. Reduces the cooldown of Heroic Leap by 15 seconds. And your Heroic Leap now increases your run speed by 70% for 3 seconds. So just going to go ahead and show this to you. Um, basically, you jump there, and then you can see I have the increased movement speed. And then it's also only a 30 second, uh, 24 second cooldown if you put in the, uh, the, uh, d the, sorry, the reduction in, uh, the cooldown that is already given through your artifact weapon. The last option here is one I really like is Crackling Thunder. Increases the radius of Thunderclap. You no longer have hamstring, so this is your main slow, and it's on a 5.61 second cooldown. So having a 16 yard radius on this is pretty good. As you can see, I hit that guy, this greater sparring partner over here on the right hand side, and as I can hit it right here, I will hit both of these sparring partners right there uh, with a Thunderclap. So having a 16 yard radius will be helpful. Um, it will be helpful in PvP, I mean in PvE as well, because remember PvE I think you're kind of lacking in the AoE threat department because you have Revenge as a cone in front of you and then you have Thunderclap and then that's it. Um, so this may be popular in terms of just getting uh, threat on you as quickly as possible. Remember you also have lost the bleeds from Deep Wounds on your Thunderclap, that's now in Cleave, so um, it's an option that's available to you. And honestly, uh, Compared to these other options, uh, I can see Crackling Thunder probably being the choice for PvE just because of their lack in uh, AoE threat generation. In the 75 tier, we have a Best Served Cold. Revenge generates two additional rage for each target that it hits. So it hits a cone in front of you, generates five rage, but if you're hitting, you know, like... Uh, if you're hitting like six targets, you're all of a sudden are going to be generating a whole lot more rage than just five. And puts it actually more in line with the way uh, the amount of rage uh, regener uh, generation, sorry, not regeneration, the amount of rage generation that you were doing uh, with the live version of Revenge. So this is an option in the 75 tier. We also have Never Surrender. Ignore Pain will ignore up to 100% more damage based on your missing health. So this one's a little confusing, but it says 100% more damage based on your missing health. So let's go ahead and activate this. And we have uh, Ignore Pain right here. Uh, it's going to, let's see if it uh, changes the tooltip here. It doesn't. So right now it's going to ignore 713,000 uh, damage. Let's go ahead and take some damage and see if this changes here. Um, so that uh, if it does, uh, we can get a good idea of uh, how much... Uh, 
damage we will uh, be able to mitigate here. So I'll, I'll knock my health down about halfway here and see if it changes. Ignore pain. It says it's up to 830,000 damage now. That can be mitigated. I'm not sure if that's been changed by the actual amount here. As you can see, you can see in my bar up here, I'm able to mitigate my entire health bar that's missing at the moment. So that's pretty powerful. Uh, you can see just how strong it is. Uh, it's a very strong ability, uh, the new Ignore Pain. So uh, that's an option to you. The last is Indomitable, which increases your maximum health by 25% and the maximum effect of Ignore Pain by 25%. So, um, in the last video, I, I talked about bears being, you know, the health, kind of the, the, the beasts of health, like having a massive health pool. I didn't realize that I had Indomitable on, and I was kind of surprised to see their health pool very close to what bear tanks are, um, and that was because I had Indomitable on. So if you want bear health tank, you basically choose Indomitable, and then you're up to about bear tank standards. So you have that option of having a large health bar, and increasing the maximum effect of um, Ignore Pain by 25%, which increases all the way up to 900,000. Otherwise, your base will be around 713,000, and uh, it won't do as much. Personally, I think Indomitable probably is the best option, because the best way to deal with uh, both types of damage, physical and magical, is to just have a lot of health, okay? Um or be able to heal a lot or shield a lot. It, it depends on the tank class and, and I've been talking throughout these uh, first tank videos about how the tanks are different. Vengeance Demon Hunters is all about healing yourself back and mitigating physical damage through parries etc and then you also have a uh, magical damage mitigation uh, on a 20 second cooldown. Bears, it's all about having this massive health pool and then just using your mitigation uh, when you need to. Large cost mitigation when you need to. For a warrior, it's all about your shield and how much you're able to block. And then ignore pain is the extra part. And personally, I probably would like Indomitable, but it also depends on whether or not you're able to generate enough rage. If you're not generating rage very fast, maybe best serve cold would be an option. However, I can really only see best serve cold being used in an AoE situation. I don't see best serve cold being used in PvP. In PvP, I believe you'll be looking at Never Surrender or Indomitable. Uh, those will easily be the two best options, I think, that are available to you. In the 90 tier, we have Vengeance. Ignore Pain reduces the rage cost of your next Focus Rage by 50%. And, sorry, ignores. <laughs> I said Ignore Pain ignores. Ignore Pain reduces the Rage cost of your next Focus Rage by 50%, and your Focused Rage reduces the Rage cost of your next Ignore Pain by 50%. So, they kind of play off of one another. They're two new abilities. So, Focus Rage uh, increases the damage of Shield Slam, and then Ignore Pain will have that massive damage reduction uh, added to it. So, basically, you're able to get... Um, some more powerful shield slams off and at the same time you're using less rage which gives more rage open for ignore pain so it's kind of a play off of those two back and forth your second option to here is into the fray you gain three percent haste for each enemy within 10 yards up to five enemies um not really a fan of this this is an aoe potential uh in terms of what you're able to do in uh a it's aoe potential in terms of uh you know, having enemies within you, but it only stacks up to five, and I don't know, I just don't see this being a good option in PvP. I could be wrong, but uh, honestly, I think Vengeance is a better option overall. The last option here is Booming Voice. Demoralizing Shout also generates 50 Rage and increases the damage you deal to effective targets by 20%. This is easily my option for PvP, and I probably would choose this for PvP. Excuse me, I hope I, I said this correctly. This is easily my choice for PvP, and this is probably my choice for PvE as well. I just think this option is so much better than the other two. Vengeance has its options. Into the Fray is, I think, going to be possibly PvE only. Uh, uh, I don't know if it'll be used much in PvP, but Booming Voice, I think, is really good. Demoralizing Shout, 1.5 minute cooldown, reduces uh, 15 yards. Remember, the range is increased through your talent tree. Um, 
1.5 minute cooldown reduces the damage they deal and increases the damage you deal by 20%. Uh, but I think the real zinger here is the generation of uh, immediate generation of 50 rage. So if you're losing out on rage, you pop that and you have 50 rage to deal with right off the bat. So that can be really strong. With that, let's go ahead and look at the 100 tier. Anger management makes its return. However, it's been nerfed significantly. It only works on battle cry, your new ability, last stand, and shield wall. Okay, the old um, anger management would uh, it would function every 30 rage you spend would reduce it by one one uh second so now it's every 10 rage so it is a massive buff there but it's a huge nerf in the the abilities that were available before it would use on avatar it'd be used on stormbolt shockwave um and heroic leap those and demoralizing shout all of those have been taken out and so now it is only uh last stand shield wall and battle cry so Depends on how you look at it. Could be nerfed. Could be burfed. Uh, burfed. <laughs> it could be buffed. It could be nerfed. I'm not sure. Um, depending on how you look at it, but uh, it's definitely some different options there. Now the old heavy repercussions has basically been baked into uh, Shield Slam. Uh, shield Slam deals 30% additional damage when Shield Block or Shield Charge or Shield Charge is active. Uh, basically Shield Block. So it's been baked into Shield Block automatically. The new one, Shield Slam, extends the duration of Shield Block by 1.5 seconds, and Shield Block increases the damage of Shield Slam by an additional 30%. So you're gonna have to be able to you're gonna be able to have a lot of damage out of Shield Slam. Now, when you think about it, you have if you can get triple focus rage, so your Shield Slam hits for a ton. So you have three stacks of focus rage. So your shield slam hits for another 150%, and then you have heavy repercussion, reper, repercussions on top of that. Your shield slam is going to be doing like an extra 150%, and then another 60% on top of it. It's going to be doing a lot of damage. Let's just say it's doing a lot of damage. Um, so that may be the option you take, uh, maybe in PvP. Uh, because it really does give you a lot of, in terms of options there, though PvP could easily be anger management for that option. Uh, PvPers I really don't see taking Ravage. Ravage is essentially the same as it has been. It still is, uh, I believe, 8 yards. Uh, I believe was what it was before. I know it was 6 yards before. Uh, it was 10, yard, 10 seconds at uh, 6 yards. Now it's 8 yards over 6.5 seconds. Increases your parry chance by 30% uh, for the same amount of time as it did before. So this is something that I definitely see better in PvP than I do. I mean, sorry, in PVE than I do in PvP because in PvP things are mobile and basically you know you you can toss this out and it just won't be as good anymore. Um, Ravager is here right now. In other specs, it actually replaces Blade Storm. But for right now, it's missing. Bladestorm is not accessible on a prop paladin. I do not think it's intended to be on prop paladin. However, I could be wrong. Um, this could be a bug either way. I'm not really quite sure what, uh, which way it will be. Um, I would wait for another patch so that I could know for sure. The problem is, is that we're really running out of time until the launch of 7.0 when uh, the pre-patch launches and you get all of these new changes right at the bat and I want this to all be out beforehand so that is why I have decided to just go through with the the tanks which were the last ones to go through to go with through with the final videos and just kinda knock them out because um, you know we're getting to the very end here but with that being said um, my guess is there's two things that work here either Bladestorm should be a part of a a kit for a protection warrior it used to be in the talent tree either it should be baseline and ravager replaces it or it's a talent here and ravagers in the wrong spot because it, it functions in two different ways for fury fury it's a talent and you basically have to spec into bladestorm for arms and I'll show you right here. You actually get to see just how easy it is to change specializations and everything in this game. It's it's pretty amazing. So you see for Fury here, as I open this up, Bladestorm is actually a talent that you have to select, okay? But for Arms, it's a little bit different, okay? 
Arms, Bladestorm is baseline, and then they have a Ravager as a talent that you can take, and it replaces Bladestorm. So there are a couple of things that work here, um, as I said. Uh, it could be that Ravager is supposed to be there, but it's not supposed to replace Bladestorm. And so Ravager, for some reason, um, they haven't put in the new version in which it does not replace Bladestorm. It's just its own ability, as it was originally. Or um, Bladestorm is supposed to be baseline for Protection Warriors like it is for Arms Warriors, and Ravager is supposed to replace it. My best guess is that this is actually supposed to be its own ability that you acquire. And that Bladestorm is not baseline for Protection Warriors. And it will not replace, Ravager will not replace it. And I do not believe that this is actually supposed to be Bladestorm in the talent tree uh, instead of Ravager. I really do think this is Ravager because this actually does give, uh, as it has on live, it actually gives some defensive qualities to it. And so that's why I think this is here. It's just there's a bug at the moment in which it uh, has not reverted back to uh, the changes that were most recently made in which Bladestorm became its uh, Bladestorm became a baseline ability for arms and a talent for fury and then Ravager being in there kind of mixes things up uh, because it actually replaces Bladestorm in arms. So my best prediction for you guys, uh, look out for changes in Beta Realms, is that Ravager is just supposed to be an ability that you can get. Uh, you will not get Bladestorm at all as a protection paladin and it will not be in the talent tree. So with that, that's everything for the PvE talents for a Protection Warrior. Um, I'm not going to say it's kind of the let, one of the letdowns in terms of talent trees. Some talent trees I go through, I'm like, man, this is so cool. There's so many options here. For a Warrior, a lot of it centers around um, basically ignore pain. A lot of it centers around ignore pain. Uh, your basic ability is all centered around your shield. Your shield slam... Uh, your ability to protect shield block and even some of these talents do center around that as well your selections in this talent tree basically are dealing with shield block shield slam and uh, ignore pain that is going to be your damage mitigation as a warrior that's what you're built around as I mentioned at the very beginning of the first video here with with protection warriors you are all about your shield as a warrior everything is built around this really cool looking artifact weapon that they have for a protection warrior in world of warcraft legion so that is what they're going to see and as i said um in the first video i really do feel as though they're trying to kind of put warriors in certain plate uh tanks in certain places this tank will be better at aoe dam uh, aoe threat this tank will be better at single uh threat this tank will be better at you know physical damage. This tank will be better at magical damage. There will be tanks that are kind of good at everything. That'll be, I think, so far from what I've seen, a Guardian Druid. And then there are tanks that will be, I think, more single target minded. I think this is going to be one of them because they really do have a tough time uh, in terms of AOE threat. They've got Thunderclap and they've got their Cleave from Revenge and that's it. So things will be a little difficult on the AOE front in terms of a... Uh, protection warrior they could be fo they could be um focusing too much on neltharion's fury which is the artifact weapon ability uh that may be the reason why they have uh, kind of slacked on aoe threat for protection warrior but i could be wrong and then there's, the, there's always the chance that i'm wrong about bladestorm and that bladestorm is actually supposed to be um really uh baseline um in fact let me check real quick i'm pretty sure that bladestorm has a lower cooldown uh, on arms as well. I just need to make sure that I'm off of the Ravager talent so we can see. Uh, no, it's a 1.5 1. minute cooldown. So I was wrong about that. So it, it's just there's low threat. There's low AoE threat potential as a protection tank. And so that makes me think that Prot Warriors will be more of a single target uh, based, uh, a, a single target based warrior as opposed to a uh, ranged war as in as opposed to an AOE type, uh, uh, an AOE type threat, uh, you know, uh, uh, can't even get the words out, jeez, uh, as opposed to a warrior, a, a tank that can generate a lot of AOE threat.
So with that uh, complete uh, flub there, let's go ahead and take a look at the PvP talent. So PvP will be functioning different in World of Warcraft Legion. Uh, you'll be starting at level 1, you'll work your way all the way up to level 50 through PvP. At level 1, you'll get Gladiator's Medallion. By level 10, you'll have Thunderstrike. Uh, and then at 13, you'll get Adaptation, you'll work your way down again to Warpath, and then you'll do the same rinse and repeat for the third one. At full level 46, you'll get Dragon's Charge, and then at 50, you'll be able to Prestige and start all over again with Gladiator's Medallion. Why might you Prestige? Well, if you Prestige, you get cool things like mounts and pets and so forth. So you can choose to do that, or you can say, I'm tired of leveling up my talents, I'm just going to go with this. So it's your choice. With that being said, when you first enter a battleground, you'll get an Honorable Medallion. This honorable medallion is the same as an heirloom trinket. It's a three-minute trinket. Um, basically, you can trade that in for various options in this first tier. In this first tier, you can trade in the honorable medallion for a regular gladiator's medallion, which is your regular basic two-minute trinket. The second option open to you is adaptation. All loss of control effects with a duration of five seconds or more will activate your honorable medallion spell, but only causes it to incur a 60-second cooldown. Uh, basically, uh, that gives you kind of... Uh, it takes the ability for you to actually activate it out of your hands, but at the same time, it uh, gives you a 60-second trinket. Uh, honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of this, but um, for a tank, at least, um, I like it on some DPS. Uh, you do have the option to still use your Honorable Medallion. It's not taken away, but you kind of have to be uh, careful, uh, because if you use your Honorable Medallion, it will put Adaptation, I believe, on a 3-minute cooldown. With that being said, there is a third option here. It replaces your Honorable Medallion, and I can see tanks taking this. Um, it is a passive that reduces the duration of incoming crowd control effects by 25%, which uh, really kind of stacks up really well when you think about diminishing returns and so forth. So I really do like that option. With that being said, we have the second tier here, which is all about the uh, tanks. Uh, we have a Relentless Assault. Being attacked increases your damage by 3%, lasts for 5 seconds, stacks up to 5 times, so the more you're attacked, the more damage you deal. You have Oppressor. Your taunt has a reduced range, but causes the enemy player to be intimidated, causing their damage, ca increasing their damage taken by 20% for 6 seconds. Your melee attacks refresh the duration of this Intimidated. I said this for both tank videos, and now I'll say it for this tank video so far. For organized PvP, this is going to be the number one option. It's just so strong to be able to have that 20% increased damage that people are going to be taking. Uh, you know, you basically get single target, single out of target and be like, guys, focus on this fool and everyone can focus on them and deal 20% increased damage, which is really strong, and I think in organized PvP, it will be the option. The last option here is Soften Blows. Any non-periodic attack that deals damage less than 10% of your maximum health is reduced by 20%. Basically, um, maybe in unorganized PvP, I can see this is the option. Um, basically, your Frost Bolts, your Fireballs, your Shadow Bolts, your um, Arcane Shots, anything that does like minimal damage, um, is not going to be very strong. Um, it's going to, uh, you're, you're going to be able to mitigate a lot of it. Whereas something like a Greater Pyroblast or Sniper Shot that just really wrecks you is going to do much more, is going to not be able to be mitigated with damage. You're going to really hit the, feel, the, the big portion of that. Now, Softened Blows really goes well with something like Indomitable. 25% increase in your health, you're sitting at 2.7 million health, that means for them to actually hit the threshold in which they won't have their uh, damage reduced uh, by 20%, uh, they will have to deal uh, damage equaling something like 2.7, uh, 270,000 uh, damage with a shot, and really the only things I can think of that can do that are two marksmanship abilities, two frost mage abilities, and a uh, greater pyroblast and maybe like one or two other abilities so uh there's not much in the game that can really cross that threshold which means you pretty much get a 20 percent reduction on everything except for dots so that's a pretty good option there in the third tier we have mass spell reflection it will replace your spell reflection it reflects all spells cast on you and your party and raid members within 20 yards for three seconds 30 second cooldown pretty awesome uh this used to be in the regular pve talent tree um, it lasted for five seconds there. It was a three second cooldown. This one only lasts for three seconds, so you're gonna have to kind of plan it. But pretty cool option. Sword and board. This used to be a talent a long time ago. Uh, increases the critical strike chance of your devastate by 30%, and shield slam deals 20% more damage while shield block is active. 
uh, sword and board. We'll just start thinking about this here. Sword and board plus heavy repercussions, re repercussions plus uh, focused rage stacked up to three times. A lot of damage. A lot, a lot, a lot of damage. The third option here is called bodyguard. Okay, instant. 15 second cooldown. Protect an ally, causing 40% of all physical damage they take to be transferred to you. When the target takes physical damage, your revenge cooldown has a 30% chance to be reset. Bodyguard is cancelled if the target is further than 15 yards from you. Last one minute. Only one target can be bodyguarded at a time. So you basically get to just run there, and and you get to be a, you know, a, a, a protection bot for maybe a healer or something. This is going to be really... Uh, popular, I think, in Arena. I think Arena players are going to be using this in twos and threes. Easily, this will be the option. The, the Warrior will just be sticking to you real closely, and it's going to be hard to take down the Warrior or the Healer because, you know, yeah, you can switch to, um, you can switch to a different target, but at the same time, uh, you know, you have to deal with the tank that's got a lot of health. So, that's, uh, that's pretty, uh, good option there for you to have. Um, I'm not sure how they are queued. I think there's a limit to how many tanks can be in a battleground. I was just thinking here. I know there's a limit. They limited tanks in some way in battleground, uh, in arenas. And I do believe the limit is, in fact, that uh, you cannot queue more than two tanks in a battleground. So you cannot have two prot warriors, uh, uh, sorry, in battlegrounds, in an arena. You cannot queue more than two tanks in an arena. I believe that is a new limit that's being implemented. Um, I just thought of that. Uh, so it will not affect this. So you still be able to use this in arenas and so forth. So it should be pretty powerful. In the fourth tier, we have Rage Machine. Non-periodic attacks against you generate five rage. Uh, this is awesome. Just going to give you a lot of rage over time. There's Tenderizer. Auto attacks against targets above 80% health uh, generate five range. I don't really like this one as much because as a prop, prop warrior, I, I don't really want to go in for the guy 100% health. I want to go after the guy who's got lower health and try and CC him, CC him and mess him up as much as possible. So I don't see much use out of this. And then the other option is Rage Gate from Intercept increased by 15. So it'll extend it to the way it is on live with charge, which is a full 35. So this may be the option that you may want to take. I personally would probably like this, considering that you get uh, an intercept, basically you have a 7.5 second cooldown on intercept. That's pretty awesome. In the fifth tier, we have a leave no man behind. Using intercept on allies reduces all damage they receive by 90% for two seconds. This is so strong, and this is actually what I was thinking of when I was talking about Safeguard and having a, a kind of broken PvP talent. I thought they had taken this out of the game, but I guess not. Leave no man behind using Intercept on Allies reduces all damage they receive for 90%. So if you see a massive uh, Greater Fireball, for instance, uh, Greater Fireball, if you didn't see the Fire Mage video, operates like Kale Thos's, um, uh big Pyro Blast from... Um, uh, here's the storm. It slowly moves towards the target. All you have to do is time it right, and uh, that target's going to take no damage whatsoever as long as you intercept them on the right time. So there's a lot of options here with Leave No Man Behind. It's pretty awesome in terms of 90% reduction. That's pretty cool. There's Morale Killer. Reduces the cooldown. Demoralizing Shout by 30 seconds, and Demoralizing Shout now reduces the damage enemies deal to all targets, not just you. This is really potent. So this brings it down to a one minute cooldown. If you have the ability Booming Voice, uh, not only is it range, uh, does it have its, uh, does it generate rage for you, but it also increases your damage at the same time. So there's a lot of options here with Morale Killer. Uh, really, this is a really fun tier, um, if you ask me. The last option here is Shield Bash. Good old Shield Bash. Bash the target with your shield, dealing 138 physical damage and reducing their damage done by 15%. If the target is casting, the cooldown is instantly reset, generates 3 rage, 10 second cooldown. Uh, I like it, but uh, compared to the other two, I kind of feel like shield bash is going to be left behind. In the final tier, we have Thunderstruck. Thunderclap now roots all targets for one second. That's awesome, especially if you add in Crackling Thunder, which increases the radius to 16 yards. Um, remember, that's pretty far. I mean, I hit this target right here. Uh, being able to root everyone as a, a protection warrior for one second with Thunderstruck is pretty powerful. You have Warpath. 
When landing with Heroic Leap, all targets are stunned for three seconds. This one's a little bit more difficult to land, and uh, warriors still have frustration with uh, Heroic Leap and being able to like get it off on hills, cliffs, etc. So honestly, I don't see this one being taken very often at all. I think Thunderstruck's a much better option. The last option here is Dragon Charge. Instant 20 second cooldown run at high speed at a distance in front of you. All enemies in your path will take 128,000 physical damage and be knocked back. So, this is, um, it's like a skill shot, I should say. Um, it's not like you actually choose a target and go for it. It's like a skill shot, so think, um, kind of like, uh, the, uh, the very quick, uh, the kick that, uh, Windwalkers have. I can't even think of the name at the moment. But they have uh, the ability to like fly across a flying serpent kick or something like that. They're able to fly across the battlefield really quickly. That's kind of what this will be, except for you're able to knock back enemies in your path and deal damage to them. But it's a, kind of like a skill shot. You have to line it up and go in that direction and hit everyone. So this is really a cool idea. It can knock everyone back, but really I see Thunderstruck being the best option in this tier. The real interesting tier for me is this tier 5. Otherwise, I think you have great options for PvP as a Protection Warrior. Um, that's pretty much everything for a Protection Warrior in World of Warcraft Legion. This is the last time we will be in Skyhold unless I decide to come back here and do a little um, overview of um, Class Order Halls and, and you know kind of what they bring. Um, the only thing that uh, is a little concerning is that uh, the AoE threat generation of a Protection Warrior may be on the low side. So we'll see and monitor how that actually turns out. Uh, it may be warriors become more single target tanks, and the AoE target tanking is done by other people. We'll have to see what happens. Otherwise, that is everything for a protection warrior in World of Warcraft Legion. This is the Skyhold. Uh, this is the last time I will see you guys in the Skyhold. Otherwise, uh, this is Tearless, and I will see you guys later. Tearless out.